So. I have no idea what's going on, by the way. What, I, I, only... watched, I watched the whole I was race. I say, am I the only one that actually watched the race? Yeah, I watched it. You watched it in German? Yeah. You watched I watched it in, it in Italian. Italian. Ali watched it Are we in... rolling? Because this is good content. Yeah, we are, yeah. Oh, you, shit. Are you rolling? Yeah. <laughs> no, you've just I... said, this is good content. Right? <laughs> Let's start content. the conversation again. Okay. Am I the only one that watched the race? No, I watched it too, in Germany. I watched it in Italian. And Ali, Ali watched, watched it in, in WEC. <laughs> in WEC. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to another podcast. Today is the Spanish Grand Prix. Maybe not so many talking points this time, but I'm Matt. I'm Jess. I'm Ali. I'm Tommy. And this is the Spanish GP. Spanish! Spanish. Yeah. Did you see that tweet? I cannot believe that. Did they mean to do that? F1 put a tweet out after the race with hashtag with Spanish. Spanish GP. And McLaren did it I as don't well. feel like they I would think, have done that on purpose. I think they... No, I think they are. I think they're just trying to meme themselves. I don't know. It was coming up a lot when you actually typed in Spanish GP because McLaren accidentally used the hashtag yeah. as well. Oh, did they? And then deleted Naughty. the tweet, even though... But is it, because, is it because, you know, on Twitter, if, so, if there's somebody that uses it, like an influential account that yeah. uses that hashtag, it automatically comes up when you yeah, start typing yeah, yeah, yeah. out. Yeah, so I think yeah. they were just like, oh yeah, that's the one. And then, I mean, we got we got a tweet from Spain itself. Yeah. 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 What, what was country, that about? The what? country itself replied to us on Twitter saying just Spain. something like, oh dear. Like, just at Spain, verified. I was like, <laughs> hi Spain. <laughs> <laughs> Wow! Shout out to Spain. Yeah, shout yeah. out to Spain. Yeah, well on Spain. So three word race reviews is the is the standard uh, go to now. So I'll I'll start today. Why did I say that? I don't actually thought that <laughs> at all. Time. Um, okay, Every I'm gonna time. go with. Oh my wow! <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I say oh my wow, Alistair's uh, trademark uh, quote is because it was really boring and mm. it was kind of almost a shock to the system for me uh, because. Watching the race, I was like, I've forgotten what it's like for someone to just run away with the victory, mm. and that's it. Like, it, mm. there was there was really nothing going on apart from the first lap, obviously Grosjean, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But really, I was just sat there in Germany in a random cafe with no commentators in English. RTL rubbish, by the way. <laughs> oh my! Literally, I was there capturing a tweet for IBR, and I've looked up, no commentary, and there's flipping Ericsson and signs going side by side through turn one, and Ethan was like, "Look, Matt," and I was like, "Why is there no talking?" Yeah, because you look up, don't you? When yeah. it's a boring race, like, you oh. just look up when the commentators start sounding, even if it's in a different language. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. If they, if they sound excited, you're like, "Oh, something's happening!" But so they were saying nothing. Yeah. It's the opposite of the Le Mans commentary that just is always constantly absolutely. That all the time crazy it's so when annoying but i felt like that's what happened in on the italian coverage was they just sounded excited the entire time yeah so there yeah. was there was no way that you could <laughs> kind of differentiate between when it was boring and when it was not because i mean it was davide valsecchi and oh, good old davide. people so um <laughs> it was just kind of like everything look at sounded, this <laughs> <laughs> everything sounded exciting so but how, and, how can a commentator go from like 10% all the way up to 100%, but when they're all constantly at 100%, how can they go... Because they're Italian. Actually. And they have an extra 10%. <laughs> Davide, I noticed in the F2 race this weekend, I was watching a clip, and he was sombre, if anything. He was really? talking about an instant, like... And here goes the... I mean, I'm not going yeah, to even I try. Yeah, actually. He wasn't, he wasn't he was, full of I like, feel like he's oh been told God. to yeah. calm down and then get excited at certain yeah. bits, which I'm not... Did they sedate him? Potentially, because he was <laughs> genuinely... I was like, is he okay? <laughs> He's not all right. Did you, did you tweet him? No, you okay? no, I didn't. Um, I, I, I maybe should have, because it, I think he needs a bit of cheering up. Anyway, Jess, talk to me about your three-word race review. That was boring. Oh, come on! Boring is a word that Everyone. all five of the <laughs> three-word race reviews we've got from our fans, Adicule FCB, just plain boring, Naya... Wow, you really struggle are... <laughs> with these, don't you? Neyas Gids Hanth, so damn boring. I find the hardest. Honestly, <laughs> Tommy, what are these tags? Akmalash Hibili, a boring race. Christian Nine, shitty boring race. Oh. STBN72 photo, boring, boring, boring. Can you use another word other than boring? Mundane. Great word. That was mundane. Any, that was any, mundane. Any thoughts? It's just, I mean, I think we called it, didn't we? We knew Spain is always one of those ones that unless something crazy happens, like the Mercedes take each other out, it's just kind of a flat race. It's a terrible track and mm. the chicane is... Terrible. Well, to be mm. fair, it's the chicane is literally the worst corner in F1. Really? Yeah. That, Hands that, down. That just stops everyone. It ruins. It, it basically, any chance you've got of following another car gets immediately ruined as soon as they get through that chicane yeah. and then they're not within 
DRS or any chance of overtaking. You and even DRS is like it, marginal. I know the straight's not huge, but mm. just as soon as they get around that chicane, it's just terrible. So instead of, instead of going tight right just before the chicane, if they carried on going and took that long sweeping right, would that give well, them more of a run-up to then well, overtake on the, the straight? that was the old track, but they got rid of it because it was like dangerous and stuff. <laughs> so they, um, yeah, they used to do that sweeping right-hand corner and now... But with more downforce now, surely it's not as dangerous. It's still pretty... God, Ali dropping yeah. some F1 knowledge. I like it. You just what, need to just do a different track. That's right? what A. Murray 85 said, was what can F1 do to spice up this race? Remove the last chicane. Yeah. Um, Remove the track. Obviously, there's oh. a... I mean, I agree. Terrible, yeah, I it's agree. A great, it's a great track for testing. It's a great track to see the cars going ball to the wall flat, especially the new cars that look amazing. Like Watching them through turn nine in qualifying mode looks awesome yeah unless you're hardly going backwards into that corner sorry ali um but Wet drivers are amazing in this one <laughs> aren't they ali <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's not it's not a great track for racing it never has been which is why um i don't know if we're, i'm gonna do my three word race review which is old dear pirelli because yeah they I agree. they dropped the ball massively we were full of compliments in the last podcast saying you know they nailed it with mm-hmm. um the tires but on these tracks, we need, it was their job not to make one-stop races, not to make boring races. They, they were bought into Formula 1 to do that. Yeah. And they bought a tyre again, which could have just gone the entire race. Yeah. But cru- I'd rather have seen no one pit. No, but crucially, Ferrari had to two-stop. And that's what lost was that's on the podium. Kind of. No, they've come out and said they absolutely had to. I reckon and that's that old covering Ferrari's bottle job strategy. No, T- Toto Wolf came out and said he completely understands why they had to do that strategy. So because they I changed don't the agree. tires to help Mercedes. Well, oh. <laughs> that is that is a very Everybody controversial your, point. Everybody get your tinfoil hats yeah, out. Yeah. Uh, like, pff, I don't I don't agree. I think. No, I don't think I don't think they change they ch- they well they changed the tires which definitely benefited Mercedes. I don't think they changed the tyres because it benefited Mercedes. No. no it, I mean, wasn't, it wasn't going, oh, screw you, Ferrari. We're doing it. Like, they, they changed the... So for people that don't know, they changed the tread on the tyres to stop them overheating because Mercedes uh, and Red Bull, to be fair, were struggling in testing. So... Vettel, but then in testing, they meant they had a very... St- what Vettel came out and said, that they had a very strange... Yeah. testing plan they, were doing it on they purpose, only did the mediums they, or didn't they or, or to, something yeah vettel was very ranty that race after us saying that he was quite calm he, he almost very, had his tinfoil hat on didn't yeah he? he was he kept dropping the whole well probably change the tires every interview he was saying that yeah um but yeah they changed they changed the tires uh to stop blistering but i think the most annoying thing was uh pirelli came out and said oh well if we hadn't uh changed the tires it would have been a lottery is that that's a bad fa- thing? That's not a yeah. bad thing at all. I, I want to see Ericsson win the race. <laughs> I think, no, but I think <laughs> equally, like we, we we all loved Baku. Like Baku was insane. It was great. But do we want that every single race? I'm not sure we do. I think it's still different, though, isn't it? Like it's, yeah. di- it's different. But wa- I don't. I do you know what? We don't want to make it ridiculous. I don't think F1 needs to be ridiculous. And if that was kind of the risk, I mean. This is the whole thing, isn't it? Like we we talk about a lot of things with with 2020 hindsight, and we go, oh, this should have happened, or this should have mm. happened. And I think you know, Spain. There's obviously a problem with Spain. They tried to do something. There is a problem. That changed <laughs> it. They tried to do, they tried to change it with with new tire compounds, see if it helped. Arguably, it didn't. And. I don't know. I just don't think. Well, it stopped the blistering, didn't it? Which. But it didn't because there was a lot of blistering still happening. They still all did a one stop apart from Vettel, though. Yeah. Which I don't know. quite easily a one stop. I genuinely think if Mercedes well, took the mediums on, they could have gone the entire race. Yeah, because absolutely yeah. no problem. Because Ricardo was setting fastest laps right at the end. Yeah. records at, at the, the end, end of the race on one tyres, and that's that's not meant to happen with these Pirelli tyres. That they said that. I think it was quite difficult for them because. The, the track had been resurfaced as well. So probably in terms of measuring exactly ha- what tyres to bring was probably quite difficult for them. Well, they're the, the tracks, aren't they? The Silverstone, yeah. mm-hmm. Paul Rick, the ones they've resurfaced are the ones where they're bringing these new tyres. I think it's because they don't want a Silverstone of whatever year it was when they all were blowing up. Yeah. Because I think Pirelli in the back of their minds are like, that is a disaster for them having tyres explode. And the fact of that sort of 
unpredictable track nature. You know, they haven't had 20 cars going around for yeah. 70 laps. They don't know exactly. So I think it's to let them to be let off. And I think a lot of people are, are pinning the blame on them purely because the track is pretty crap, to be honest. And also, it's very easy to pin the blame on the, the um, fact that changed, the variable. So, you know, it, had they not changed it, but I don't think the race would have been any less boring. I don't, I don't think those tyres would have caused that race if particularly Mercedes, to have my, been... My theory is if Mercedes had to... If their tyres were blistering and they had to pit again, pit again, like, we could have seen Hamilton... He, had, he was 20 seconds clear anyway, so he would have pitted, he would have been behind Vettel, he would have been on better tyres, and he would have had to overtake him, and it would have been an awesome race. But yeah. Instead, it wasn't. So. It was depressing to see how far Hamilton was ahead. Sorry, Jess. But uh, let's cast our it's minds fine. back to, uh, <laughs> to lap one uh, and talk about Roman Grosjean oh, a little no, bit. We God. have uh, some three word race reviews from some fans <laughs> uh, Ghost uh, 22800, Grosjean can't drive, uh, Dan.den, Grosjean is stupid. And C Malto 23, Grosjean Drift King. Drift not, not quite Drift King, really. I mean, he spun. But uh, Roman Grosjean, I mean, the guy just can't catch a break at the moment. I, I mean, he does deserve he quite a, a bit of the criticism we. He deserves. Can't catch a car. Can't catch a car. It's from spinning. And, <laughs> I mean, uh. he deserves the criticism he's getting in the sense that he has made two mistakes in the last two races. Um, but saying like, Grosjean can't drive. It's probably a little bit extreme. I think he's just yeah. having a bit of a lull at the moment. Oh, I don't and understand why he kept his foot in it. Why he... It's because he thought he could spin it all the way around or something. He said that he thought he could... But then all that, that he's going to do so, is that create That was so the smoke stupid. That, that is so just bad put, put for the a driver clutch in. to... Yeah. I mean, after, after the race, he said, like, doesn't matter what I would have done, I would have had the same outcome. If I just applied the brakes or whatever, I still would have spun. But it, applying the brakes and spinning is, is fine. But people were able to see you. Yeah. Whereas he if you just keep your foot in it and lit smoke up the screen. Yeah. yeah, that's what he did. Lit like, up he your just rear tires. Completely. That could have been. He could have taken out seven cars. Yeah. That quite easily. Um, he was very lucky that only two cars got annihilated in that crash. I he was mean, lucky someone didn't like T-bone him as well and just go yeah. straight into the but side. Correct of him. me if I'm wrong. That's exactly what happened in Baku, right? He lit up the rears and just went flying, and it's like. Well, how many times did he go off in practice as well? Yeah. He went off um, twice, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, and then the picture of him sitting on the stairs. Uh, oh I do wonder, God. like, if he sat there going, "Is this my time? <clears throat> uh, am I? Am I done?" Well, the yeah. whole isn't the whole point. The whole reason why he wanted to go to Haas is because he wanted the Ferrari seat. <clears throat> Good luck. He yeah. currently has <coughs> zero points. Yeah, he's the points. only guy Charles on Leclerc zero points. points. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. I think some. I, I've read that. I read that. But the um, <laughs> the uh, question from someone was about should he be replaced? Was it or something? Uh, Cosa 434 should it be time for Haas to look for a new F1 uh, yes, new driver yes Charles yeah. Leclerc <laughs> do you think do you think Leclerc is it would be in a better position in the Haas over the Sauber oh easily he'd be fifth uh, sorry whatever it is he was sixth. seventh yeah. every race because no one can beat <laughs> Red Bull Ferrari or Mercedes but I, I think he's he's proved himself now that he would be consistently up there I mean Mag, the Haas is really good Magnussen was in no man's land, yeah, the entire yeah. race. He was so much quicker than the midfield, so much slower than... There were some the jokes that people were so scared yeah. of him that they just didn't <laughs> yeah. have a 30-second gap to Yeah, because he had another <laughs> moment of chopping Charles Leclerc during a free practice. Hulkenberg actually laid into Grosjean after the race as well, saying, generally he likes spinning a lot during the weekend, Ooh. but lap one is not a good timing to do it with all the cars around, and he also said he should try a different sport. Jim, oh, Jim Carner. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's weird because obviously Grosjean had that terrible time where he was taking everyone out, got race ban, etc, etc. Yeah. Then he had these moments where we're thinking, wow, he is a He was on form with uh, driver. Kimi, wasn't he? For, yeah. Uh, for when, when he sorted his stuff out, he was He was fantastic. The yeah. he, everyone was like, this guy's future. Because he won GP2 by miles and everyone thought, mm. this, this yeah. kid is amazing. And I, I still personally rate Roman. I think that mm. very people are... Uh, very quick to judge. We were speaking to Kelvin van der Linde at the Nürburgring 24 Hours um, this weekend, and he was saying how it's such a fine line from being a hero and being an, a complete and utter nightmare well, on look the track. At Mac, like Max is a yeah, example uh, of yeah, that. Yeah, uh, that's who he was talking yeah. about. Was that if he had made that move around the outside of China, he'd be a hero. But yeah. he's not. He's a reckless kid. Yeah. yeah and it's the same exactly. with Roman. Like he's had two. <clears throat> I mean, the safety car thing was probably worse. This one was. 
he got a little bit scared by Kevin and there was no grip and that, that's why he everyone's scared of Kevin <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> which yeah you can understand it so <laughs> <laughs> it looked like he was going to come in and chop him again so yeah maybe he overreacted slightly but yeah you're right like I think it's very easy to kick a dog when it's down and you know he's you're right, he's, he's not caught a break this season. He's on zero points with Sorokin. That's really bad. Which just looks appalling. Sorokin's awful, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> like, he had a very bad Did you game? hear that apparently uh, the whole race, he had a very uncomfortable seat and therefore his seat that's was broke. why he his couldn't His seat was drive. broken, to be fair. Yeah, what? his seat was broken. Yeah. So he could, like, basically, do you remember how, like, Science was saying when he was going around he had, like, nausea? Yeah. He was basically distracted by having My a very My seat wasn't very comfy. Seat. Come but on. To, uh, are you kidding? <laughs> You've yes. been in an F1 car. Oh, have Thanks. we have we mentioned that before? <laughs> no, I have no idea. Matt's Link in the description. Bring it up. <laughs> um, but, you know, you are tucked in. So anything that's, I mean, that they sit, they, you know, and then apparently the Williams is for a reason. They literally car to mold it around well. your ass. So. Yeah. 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 And with a, with a Williams being a shit car. I'm sorry, but an uncomfy seat. I do not buy that. Uh, oh, Matt. No. No. I thought you of all people would understand. Oh, it wasn't comfy. Oh, come on. It like, was broken. I don't care. Like, you try driving around okay, with be... stuff up your bum. And I'll just, like, you I can mean, we, we, we don't have clarification of whether <laughs> things were stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have clarification that things were up uh, Sergei Sorokin's well, bum? Well, he's not exactly the video title. <laughs> you, try being, you try driving well, around with stuff up your what? bum. Do you Episode know what? five. <laughs> That's it. That's the thumbnail right there. <laughs> just stop up his bum. Okay, let's move on to... <laughs> So we mentioned it a little bit earlier was about Ferrari screwing up the strategy with yeah. Vettel pitting twice. I found that very odd. I mean, I know that he said that his tyres were shot, but track position is everything I don't buy it. around everything Spain. on that track. Everything. But it's we we I feel like every single race the scenario from the previous race that we were criticizing them for not doing then happens in the next race and it goes wrong again. So, you know, we all criticized Mercedes for having not pitted under the safety car or virtual safety car or whatever from, hang on, what race were we on? Back. Ba no, Bahrain? No, China? China, China where China. Danny Rick won. I'm like, yeah, where yeah. are we? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, so Vettel did do it and obviously it played into his hands in Australia and it didn't play into his hands here and, you know, Argue if he would have just started rolling back and being eaten up by Red Bulls, we'd have criticised him. Yeah, for we're having all captain not... hindsight. In exactly, podcast, that's what I mean. But... Like we have 2020 mm. hindsight when the race is over. They've come out saying that there was no other way. They had to pit. I mean, I don't know what I didn't. Again, I was watching an Italian, so I wasn't 100 percent sure of what was going on. <laughs> I'm not fluent in Italian. It's fine. Um, <laughs> no, but why German. was his stop so slow? Why was it like a five second stop? Yeah, they they. Oh. Arguably, he, he'd have been fine if he'd have just... Um, Had a normal stop. Yeah, a normal stop, he would have still got on the podium, so you'd go, oh, well, it's only one position. Bossas might have got him anyway because he was flying on those mm -hmm. tyres. Um, and that, it wouldn't have been so bad, but... That's he, what I don't understand. Know. Like, we can't, we can't say, oh, they shouldn't have pitted at all because it wasn't a normal pit. Mm. They pitted, and then they had a five-second pit stop which completely nulls the, the question that he shouldn't have two-stopped. Yeah, I guess the argument for that is that can happen in a pit stop. You know, yeah. that, that's, yeah. they, they put themselves at risk of a terrible pit but stop. But equally, which you can lose time having old tyres and being chased down by very, very fast Red Bulls. Because yeah. like we've just mm. said, Daniel was setting fastest lap records at the end of the race. Mm. So, I mean, again, like I'm not quite, I can't remember what the Delta, because I mean, Daniel, did you see the footage of Daniel doing Spinning his little behind. spin? He did yeah. a grow shot. I didn't did see, see that. that? I, so I heard a lot so of people talking about it. Yeah, it was uh, he or something, spun wasn't it? behind the virtual safety car. Do you remember <laughs> Bottas, was it last year? Bottas spun yes, behind the China. safety car. Yeah, Daniel Rick just came round, lit up, lit up the tyres, spun went over the grass I mean, and he, just proper like that's why he was 20 seconds behind he went I did wonder yeah. Yeah. like he went the long way around like, yeah, I, never, was it, just... I was like oh he spun okay now he's still going off the, no he's still going the wrong yeah. way where is he going where is he going and then <laughs> he, he just comes did back like a mini track. tour of Barcelona just <laughs> trying to get back on the track <laughs> he was like oh going around well just... you know I'm, I'm in no man's land right now so I might as well see the sights to be fair I probably missed that because RTL has so many adverts during a race. Oh, really? Literally like four minute adverts and I forgot the terrible days of ITV oh, yeah. when we used to be like, oh, yeah. we've just missed Schumacher we... take the lead at Imola or of something. Course it's like, of course yeah. you'd be triggered by that. Yeah, very triggered Schumacher fan. Anyway, let's move on. Verstappen this time. Tommy, obviously we have to talk about Verstappen otherwise. Uh, actually, Ali, we didn't get your three word race review. Oh, wait, you didn't watch it so let's just try it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I did watch it. I love it. whack. I watched the end. I watched... <laughs> 
There you go. <laughs> I watched the end is for. Damn it. I watched end. I watched, I watched end. end. Um, well, from what I saw, it was boring. <laughs> and you don't want to like the word boring. boring. I don't want it end, was boring. End was rubbish. Thanks, Ali. Let's no move worries. on to Verstappen. <laughs> <laughs> so he finally kept his nose clean. Well, <laughs> almost. 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 Hitting, hitting uh, he kept his nose clean because he didn't, because he broke his end plate. Hey, hey. nose, end plate. Hey. Good joke, Matt. Banter. Uh, I'm just reading <laughs> off the script. Uh, <laughs> Which Tommy wrote. So at XPLDN Emerald says, so Verstappen ran into the back of Stroll's car on the VSC restart. Whose fault was that? Racing incident. Racing incident. Mm. Yeah. Stroll just didn't react to the... Light, like because he's in a Stapp- Williams. Maybe the Williams is so slow that he can't accelerate he's got off lag. a corner. And um, strong. Lag. He's got <laughs> lag. Yeah, I mean, they came off the corner, Stappen, just because he's a clearly awesome driver. Oh, God. Straight away. I'm joking. Are you- uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> green light. So green light. <laughs> says, says gushing <laughs> Hamilton fan. Uh, One time, and I wasn't. You're gushing so, all the time, Tommy. Yeah. What you so, so, um, <laughs> so, yeah, he, he, he went for it and just plowed into the back of he him. You should have given didn't... him more room, though. He's there was behind the no virtual room. safety car, though. But there was no room. So when I first saw it, I was like, sake, Max, like, again. I, well, to be fair, I said that as well. But I think we're like... just so triggered by him making yeah. mistakes. But, but then he should have given... could have gone, and if Stroll had gone, there wouldn't have been a problem. Yeah, yeah. but I think you're behind a Williams, and Williams is not going to move as fast as a Red Bull. Give him room. No, but he didn't react. That's yeah, there was more like, that he didn't react. He didn't, he didn't even him. accelerate. Like, but that's yeah, he did. I guess he did. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, chill. Sorry. I know we're talking about Max, but stop breaking the equipment. <laughs> Jesus. Is, your, is that mic upside down? <laughs> Ali's there like, what are you doing to my set? It doesn't, uh, yeah. it doesn't look the same as ours. It's not upside down. I, I'm just we're muted. Oh, no, I'm right. muted it's the right. entire podcast. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, I just don't... I think just give... Especially after everything that's happened to him this season, <laughs> think about space. I think, think all the space. time you have to leave a space. Yeah, leave space. That's true. But at the same time, if it goes green, you expect the car ahead of you, to, who's a Formula One driver, <laughs> yeah. to, accelerate to accelerate as well. Away. So yeah, when if, he doesn't... <laughs> I'm going to get really boring here, but you know, like, if you're in a crash, like, on a roundabout, right? <laughs> <laughs> in a right? 30 zone. You're on a roundabout. <laughs> so you're relatable. On a, like, you're on a we're not F1 drivers. On a roundabout. <laughs> I go, I go, Jess, go I'm going to put my glasses on here, right? <laughs> but if you're in a crash whereby you, you see the gap, on the roundabout and you expect the car in front of you to accelerate off so you accelerate and you hit into the back of them it's your <laughs> fault like I mean, yeah, it's makes, the same thing sense. on an yeah, F1 yeah but the circuit. dirty air yeah, um... oh piss <laughs> off joking. with that uh, he should he, it wasn't like he was under pressure from behind so much and it wasn't as if he didn't have space to give to give Stroll space so luckily for him it wasn't race ending and luckily for him, the damage wasn't that bad, but... It was pretty bad. It makes you wonder what... Like, they spend millions and millions of pounds on well, front wing and plates, yeah. and then he smashes up the front wing, like, and he's setting fastest laps. It was so funny, because... he can en- still stay ahead of Vettel, you yeah. like, His engineer came on saying, ah, there's no real major damage, so if you're all right with the balance, carry on, son. Like, yeah. off you go. Like, but it was... I mean, uh, I guess the, the, the point is that he then caused damage to Perez. Yeah. Because that end plate mm, ended up mm. in the racing line on the track. I can't believe they didn't throw a safety car for that. That was a bit weird. But it happened all so quickly. Yeah. Like yeah he, d- he came around the yeah. corner, it fell off, and then Vettel quickly avoided it. You're uh, talking like you've seen this. Someone else quickly, <laughs> someone else quickly avoided it, and then Perez went, went straight over it. Like, it happened within, I don't but know, But normally five when, seconds like, the or track something. is... Cut, especially the last race, like, Bottas lost the lead because he ran over some yeah. debris. Yeah. You'd think, okay, let's not have that happen again. Well, we and also, how... safety car for the win. Like, close He's... the pack. Yeah. Come on. He's... He was, it was really close. Like, if Perez had gone over that in any other way, I mean, he did get He did damage his floor, well, I think. Well, yeah. I think, was it that there was debris lodged in the rear of the car? Or he something he damaged, damaged the floor yeah. or something. Yeah. So, it was, he, that could have ended his race. Mm. And he, he, well, he limped home, didn't he? Because he had a fuel problem. I, I didn't know if I, I don't know if I saw if that was a direct result of running over the debris though. But he definitely had a fuel problem. And he limped home, and managed to get points still. But yeah. you know, if that had ended his race, I mean, I, I think I'm in agreement. I think it's a racing incident. Yeah, 
Um, and Tick-tack coming down. more to, <laughs> towards the uh, safety car thing, at Dan underscore X says, should they have thrown a full safety car for, 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 for Verstappen's <laughs> debris on the front straight? Uh, and then says, in this new era of supposedly Americanized entertainment centric F1, should we see a more IndyCar attitude to bunching the field? I think for me, as a hardcore F1 fan coming through the years, I wouldn't want them to force entertainment. Um, mm. Because when you get a safety car, it's like, oh my God, yes. But if you see a bit of debris and the safety car comes out all the time, yeah. it'll become a bit numb, I think, yeah. personally. Equally, I think, I think um, the guys have a point. The positioning of that debris, the size of that debris, that could have ended somebody's it, it was, race. Yeah, it was large. Hamilton, oh, it Hamilton could, could quite dangerous. easily have run over that. Pointed his tyre, lost the race, no, just like not, Bottas. No, not Lewis. No. <laughs> but that's the thing. I, yeah, I agree, because if you watched uh, GP3 and uh, F2, every time someone went off in the gravel, they did a safety car or a virtual safety car. And while it's like, yay, yeah, mixes up the races, it actually just got very tedious watching mm. two laps, someone goes off, safety car, two laps. So you don't want mm. that, but, I mean, there wasn't, other than the start, I don't think there was a safety car. It was a virtual safety car. But is that because people have gone off, or is that because there's debris on the track? It's because people went off and they put a recovery vehicle to try and. But that makes sense because the there's a car on the track, not a bit of debris. True, but but what my point is, the race was dull for that reason. Just the fact that it's just relentless right. safety cars, and it's just like, oh, come just, on, just, just start the race. Things. It's like it's American annoying. football, just stopping the race. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it's that. We don't want it to be like that, but arguably you could have said, you know, it would have spiced up the racing mm. if, for the Ocon incident, if they'd have gone, all right, let's let's throw the safety so, car, bunch the pack up, let's see what happens. Why was there a yeah. VSC and not an actual safety car? Because there was there was no need to have wasn't a vehicle on the enough, track, yeah. so it wasn't deemed dangerous enough. But again, like maybe you could that that size of debris. I mean. I guess it depends on what the gaps between the cars are, right? If a marshal can run on track and grab it, it does seem pretty. It does <laughs> yeah, just yeah, so we can see a marshal it, it running down a track over again. again. He's going to fall yeah. over every time. There's a marshal running on track. They always <laughs> trip. I would or... fall over if I was the one running onto a live F1 <laughs> oh my circuit. God, can we please get you as, as a marshal? As a marshal, <laughs> because I said I'd fall over on yes. a live yes. F1 yes. circuit. Can we please content. risk your life for Matt dies. YouTube views? <laughs> Think of the views. Yeah. Think of the views, Matt. Yeah. Okay, fine, let's Think do it. Think of the if, gifts. If, if they'll allow me to go pick up a debris. <laughs> Think of the gifts. <laughs> of me just going face first into a circuit. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying that, Ali. Um, <laughs> but I think, you know, for me, safety cars are niche and they come out when necessary. And that's why the VSC is there. Although Vettel made a point about, was it Vettel that said yeah. about there's people make, which is the same like, like an F1 Melbourne. game. Like in it, what, sorry? Uh, yeah, he was like, oh, people take advantage of the virtual safety car. It's like, yeah, like you in Melbourne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that was legitimate, wasn't it? But he's saying yeah. that there's a loophole in it where people can gain time. It's like in the F1 game where you can, like, you have to go at a certain speed, but if you come into the pits, you can go as fast as you want. I think that's the loophole yeah. he's talking it's a, about. Yeah. It's the same that's because he, he, did cause he accelerated, didn't he, out yeah. the pits. Uh, and the same happened where when he went side by side with Verstappen, he almost got in because he could accelerate in the pit lane before the line yeah. and then break, but he, he didn't quite do it. But... We, we had this conversation with Jack when he was here mm. um, about virtual Jack safety Aitken cars. Knows. Sorry, Jack Aitken. Uh, and um, well done, by the way. F2 driver. F2, yeah. Yeah. F2 winner. What, what? F2 winner. Um, yeah, and I don't like the virtual safety car. I just... I don't like it. I don't, I don't like want it. it. I don't want it anymore. Mix the racing up. Okay, well, there you car. go, F1. Turn it off. <laughs> yeah. Just, Why do you not like it? Well, we said it before, like... it. Is is fun watching a safety car. I don't want it all the time, but like, there was one incident during that race. Throw the safety car. That's what happened in China. Because because let's let's be honest, China wasn't a particularly amazing race until the safety car yes. came out and then it just exploded. People got different tires again. Pirelli sorted out, and uh, people got different tires, and that's what made the racing really good. Mm. So, yeah. I think you say that. Uh, I think the VSC is is necessary for those intermediary points where it doesn't require a safety car but it needs to the, the race needs to be neutralized to sort an instant or to sort a, a bit of debris uh, because otherwise as you say it would be that kind of thought where oh we're going to just throw safety cars out all the time because they're so safety conscious at the moment with the whole Jules Bianchi and you know those yeah, kind of yeah. incidents that VSC needs to be there uh, to in order to sort of neutralize the race and mm-hmm. sort everything out 
That's I, I, I agree with Matty. I don't, I don't think it necessarily neutralises a race because there are loopholes and it's not the same as bunching up the field. You're not essentially neutralising the race. But um, I think that there are periods where you clearly need to be able to slow the cars down, but you don't need to bring out full-on safety car for X amount of laps because that equally, as you were saying, Tommy, in F2, it's... It's tedious. It's really boring having no racing. Yeah. Because there is no ra like you're having lap after lap with no racing. They're just following in procession. And even if like afterwards it's mm. exciting, I wouldn't want that throughout the racing. Mm. So I agree. I like I like I quite like virtual safety. And cars. IndyCar IndyCar does have the problem to be fair where safety cars make more safety cars because it yeah. 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 Everyone yeah. Up. yeah and then, and they, then everyone tries yeah. to win it at the first corner. And then they crash and then there's another safety car mm -hmm. and it just continues. And that's when it gets to the point where you just go, oh, come on, let's just race. Why? But they are so much yeah. closer in IndyCar, though. Yeah, true. In F1, they're yeah. not as close as they are yeah. around the oval tracks or wherever yeah, they are. Ali missed uh, oh, the motorsport. He's really learning. I'm, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really so proud. proud of you. I'm really proud of you. You know, you're not I know just... motorsport. <laughs> <laughs> we need that on a T-shirt. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I know motorsport. I think and to sum it up, you know, we just need to race at Baku every week, really. I mean... You know, that's basically it. Just safety cars and Baku. Driver of the day. Hmm. Now, my driver of the day is Charles Leclerc oh, again. Of course it was. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, um, oh, Charles. Oh, Charles. Oh, Charles. Oh, Charles. I mean, we're not even friends, but it's fine. <laughs> Maybe one day. Uh, Charles Leclerc, uh, genuinely outperforming that Sauber he again. Is He's awesome ridiculous. Awesome. Marcus Ericsson, to be fair, shout out to him. Didn't get points, but he did do well he doesn't deserve yeah. driver of the day but he, he was like there was no that defending yeah. from science was awesome science nearly ended like... up in jupiter like, <laughs> like, <laughs> at the end of the straight <laughs> he if he hadn't have did you see the point where he yeah. literally was there and he went like that like it was yeah. the most aggressive turn out of the, the same slipstream. thing as the red bulls in baku yeah. yeah he pulled in to keep it in the slipstream before the yeah. first corner and i'm surprised that ericsson didn't ruin his uh uh, downforce. downforce, that's the one. There with dirty air. He's getting it. Uh, <laughs> I know motorsport. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're right. it, could, it could have been the same. Could have been exactly You're the same right. incident. But, it was but so Marcus it... wasn't reckless like Max. Oh. Or Magnussen. <laughs> <laughs> but it was. It was really good. Again, like these kind of drivers that we label as like safe, you know, consistent, boring. boring. Like seeing them do stuff like that, you're like, oh, there is a racer in there. Oh my god, Marcus did something. Oh my god, Marcus, <laughs> yeah. oh my god. Yay. Like poking it, him with a stick. It really, <laughs> I, like do it something. is brilliant, and uh, and there should be more of that. And and I'm glad that 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 drivers yeah. are getting the opportunity to I'm, do that. I'm glad he did that as well. Uh, so who was your driver of the day? Then, oh, Jeff? that's really tough. Um, it's not really, is it? Who are you going to say? Hamilton. Hamilton. How is it really been? It's really boring. It's a really driver it's a really... of the day, if anything. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I know it's. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I know it's. Jesus I know Christ. it's boring. It's re it's a really boring choice, and however much I want to say Charles Leclerc is it is Hamilton because he just won the race by twenty seconds over his teammate, got pole. It's a I clean, mean, clean weekend, really, wasn't it? Yeah. Is it? I hate I hate giving driver of the day to someone that just, just wins, wins the yeah, race yeah. from pole because everyone wants the romantic choice of someone that went from 22nd to third mm. but realistically no one really did that that race yeah so there wasn't too many Hamilton. shining drivers like there was in uh, in Baku you know we were like oh who do we choose sort of thing you know but I think yeah uh, I agree Lewis did a really really good job but I do like the romantic option but of Charles Leclerc <laughs> Sal so. Sal 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 has got a better car right now because Ferrari have given them more is that correct? Am I chatting out my ass? They've on? got. They don't have. Um, <laughs> they don't have the old engine like they used that's to, it. where they just gave them a. But I think you could really see it this race. Yeah. That, that Sauber wasn't engine. as laggy as it usually is. Laggy. <laughs> <laughs> that's Eric, so that's what Ericsson did. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> laggy. <laughs> <cars off. laughs> The F1 online. <laughs> Amazing. But, uh, no, it's good. Like we should. I w like we want the best of the rest to be just as exciting as the front, and I think it is. Yeah. I think the. Ha I mean, R.I.P. Grosjean. But you know, the Haas, the Sauber, oh Ferraris, um, are looking pretty strong. A lot stronger than they have done. Mm. So mm. yeah, but. Driver of the day. I really, I don't know. I don't have a driver. You have of the to day. give us a name. No, that's not how it uh, works. Okay, we'll come back to you, Alistair, okay. who watched two minutes of the race. Who, who would you? Uh, who stood out in those two minutes? <laughs> well, watching oh, the highlights, uh, I would say, 
I don't know, I think Max did well this race, apart from necessarily hitting He's into Max. Max. driver of the day. Into oh, you didn't watch the race. Well. Yeah, so I can't. <laughs> my, my day. Just Max. slam on your opinion. Max. Max, wow. Yeah. Okay. You've already said Lewis. Yeah. You've done Leclerc. Charles, yeah. They're probably oh, the three Charles. they're probably the three best drivers in the race to be fair. Yeah. I mean Charles yeah, I is uh, I just want to yeah. reiterate my point. I, I the, the reason why I'm going for driver of the day for Charles again is because I love him. Uh yeah, no. <laughs> uh, because at the beginning of the season, you know, he was getting used to the getting used to F one. We didn't see that spark he was getting beaten by marcus you know he was getting yeah. beaten in qualifying but now i feel like he's actually coming into his own he's there now isn't he he's like demolishing when, marcus yeah. now so proud. and i'm like really God. proud of him and it's i wish because, follow me it's because he he um <laughs> <laughs> because yeah he um in f2 he was absolutely awesome like, yeah. in f2 uh, as a rookie i think he was a rookie yeah, he was, yeah. and he absolutely smashed the title and everyone was like this kid is amazing he's gonna you know replace Kimmy at Ferrari when Kimmy goes and the first two races you're kind of like yeah what's he doing exactly. like to be fair like you have to get used to Formula you're 1 it's a completely Formula different yeah. ball game but now he is just on it and to be scoring points and he was racing Alonso for God's yeah. sake for yeah. most of the race good. and he put something on Twitter yeah that was I a saw proper that like, it was quite cool oh. he put something like uh Learning twice racing. as much racing Fernando Alonso or something. Yeah, and yeah. he's put Kinda up sweet. a fight because at one point it looked like it was going to be a, like a easy, and then he came back. And even though he did lose the position in the end, it yeah. was like it w- he didn't make it easy for Fernando, which exactly. is yeah, good to good. see. Yeah, so yeah. not quite sure his driver of the day. You've had enough time, Jess. Oh, I'm just going to say it. no, but I'm going to get so much hate. Gushing. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> yeah. It was a clean race. It was, he did everything right. Mercedes race. are back on form, which Thanks, I can't decide is a good thing or a bad thing. I just hope they don't, like we said, said it last time, that Hamilton on his, not Best on his day. A game, was leading the title. And we go, please don't now be good when you're already leading the title and he's 20 yeah. seconds clear. I just hope, like you said it, you said it in Tech Reacts, I just hope it is that where... Ferrari are the, are the team to beat. Then it's Mercedes. Then it's Red Bull. Yeah. Then it's Ferrari. What? Depends because what. It, it seems like Mercedes are still much better at strategy, and Ferrari, Ferrari seem to throw it on strategy or silly, silly mistakes. Wasn't it about? Wasn't it roughly the same last year where it was kind of close between the two of them, exactly. and roughly around this time last year, Ferrari messed up. It was actually a little late. I think it was a little later in the season. Um, yeah, it's not Weck Alley. <laughs> it was a little later in the season, but yeah. And it's, it's, you know, it smacks of that again, but I guess we're just going to have to wait and see for the next race. And see yeah, that's that. Oh, happens. I love that little segue. I'm okay, so Jess is the best, best of segues. Who, who's going to win in Monaco? Uh, predictions for the next race. Whoever qualifies on I'm going to get rinsed for this, but Verstappen's going to win. No. I, I was going to say the same. I was genuinely going to say the same. He is. He is. Yeah, he wow. Is. Close yeah. your legs, Tommy. You're gushing too much. Um, <laughs> back up. Well, yeah, Red Bull have the best car. Um, Sorry? In the sl- in, have you yeah. watched the first? In the, sl- in, yeah. the, in the slow corners, Red Bull are the fastest. Yeah. No, Even they're Hamilton not going to win that chance. Even Hamilton Red Bull are going to win Monaco. So. Yeah. Oh, come on. I mean, it'd be good. Um, I'd quite like Red Bull to win. Yeah. I'd like them to they, be up they there, don't sure. have, They're essentially like, they don't have an engine in the back, but they've got an awesome <laughs> car. So it's like Hartley. Like Hartley. Yeah. Like <laughs> oh, do you like that one, Annie? <laughs> 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 no, Anything with a bike no. driver. Oh! Yeah. Yeah. If I get that one. Yeah. <laughs> this happens either going to win or bin it in the wall. But um, I think he'll bin it. He's, he's, not, he's bin not had. I mean, I can't remember him having a very good race around Monaco ever. He, he. He binned it in his first season. Oh. Yeah, true. He he. Keep going, Jess. Really I'm enjoying this. In, he was really quick oh. in qualifying last year. Oh, was and he? Then but then he, he got screwed very well on in the strategy. Race. <laughs> yeah, he got screwed on strategy. Okay, go on, so. Tommy. Give us your top three then. Right. Red, Red Bull, how, many, how many times have Red Bull did it? Monaco. I'm liking, I'm liking there, just as self-censoring this podcast. But, but yeah, didn't Lewis, gives me less work. Lewis screwed it as well, didn't he? Because it's one of those races where it's actually, again, like we play Captain Hindsight, but the year before, so was it 2016, Danny Rick lost it because yeah. they pitted him. Yeah. To Rosberg. The year before, Hamilton lost it. Rosberg won to again. Rosberg. No, Hamilton won when Danny Rick, uh, yeah. 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sorry. So, yeah. <laughs> Tommy, give me your so, top sorry. three yeah. Yeah. now. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, sorry. Verstappen, Vettel, Kimmy. Verstappen, Vettel. No, so no wow. Mercedes. No Mercedes. Wow. Hamilton sucks at Ali, Monaco, oh my wow, go. Hamilton sucks at Monaco. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's not his race. He, he's he thinks race. he's good, but he's not actually very good at Monaco. Is he? He's <laughs> oh going to win God. now, isn't he? <laughs> he thinks he's a good driver, he's not really. Ali. Oh. He's a great driver, but <laughs> Monaco. Tommy, he's not good at Monaco. Mute yourself. Okay, Ali. <laughs> I'm going to go Verstappen. Hartley. Uh, no, ha- Hamilton. Um, You're going for Verstappen as well. Yeah. He yeah. already said he, he was said going that, to. But you were too busy in your own max sphere. Right. Okay, oh, Alex. Yeah. Finally, so um, finally, the... uh, I'm going to say Kimmy just because I like Kimmy. But it will be a Ferrari. <laughs> but I want, I want <laughs> it to be Kimmy. Great thoughts. I like him, so he's going to be that. <laughs> Jess, wait oh, and see. I'm going to go for Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you said that. Because <laughs> I'm just, I'm bracing myself for comments. <laughs> for the comments. Um, mm-hmm. Lewis. You're saving me on the max comments by saying Lewis, so thanks for that. Lewis, Daniel, and Seb. Oh my God, that's exactly what I was going to say. We're Hamilton, really bad Hamilton at this prediction Monica. game. Though, Hamilton, so. Ricardo, Vettel, yeah. I think oh. Hamilton is braced for the Mercedes being pretty terrible around Monaco. He seemed to, I, I know he's going to play himself down, but I mean, he but played himself they, down and said Ferrari was, was sandbagging this weekend, and then what happened? He won yeah. by 20 didn't seconds. Didn't they win? So. They won. They always do that for Singapore, though, and didn't they win Singapore last year? Only because Vettel nuked everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, of course he did. <laughs> <laughs> nuked everyone. That's well, you know, great, right? it is Monaco. <laughs> I think it depends on the tyres again as well. Like, well, they're bringing the uh, Hypersofts finally, so it will be pink more tires. degradation and pink tyres. Oh, oh, Ali. Ali. <laughs> Colours. Oh, yeah. Nice. Do you, have, <laughs> colours. Do, you, do you have an infographic up here God where you're just it. like, oh, no. that's the pink one. <laughs> right, we also have a, an announcement about uh, of job vacancies that are at WTF1, yeah. don't we? Yeah. So we have a video editor position, so if you want to come and work with us, us, me, us lot. Maybe just, Ali. Just Ali. If you love work. Um, then let us know. What do, what do you have to do, Jess? You're probably the best love person work. to... Basically, we want to see... Obviously, we want to see how good your editing skills are. So if you have a showreel, please send that to us. Preferably with um, me. <laughs> just as well as your CV. My best moments in IBR. And a covering letter as to why you want to work for like the best brand ever. Yeah. Um, wow. But send that. Um, wow. We're also hiring for a commercial partnerships manager. So if you want to work with lots of lovely clients out in the motorsport world that job is also vacant. So again, send your covering letter and CV. And the email address you want, which Ali is going to put down at the bottom of the screen right now, is, that's actually work for More you, More editing. Uh, um, jobs at carthrottle.com. Just, just listen to her. I won't put anything down below. No, you blooming well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you will. That's amazing. I'll put, yeah. it, I'll put it in the description. It's a lot easier. No, and that was all the announcements? Was there anything? We're also that hiring, we're also hiring for an extra videographer because Ali <laughs> no longer has a job. To replace boy. Yeah. Pass um, hat. Pass hat. Pass oh, hat. yeah. Oh, yeah. And oh. the winner of the hat. hat. Yeah, the winner of the hat is Murder Us. What a great name. I'm going to go with Murderous. Murderous. Mur- I'm trying to make it not sound like Murderous. Mur- Please don't murder us. Please don't. Yeah. Murderous. Murderous. Congratulations. You won a hat. hat. And uh, the next competition, I think, will be in our F101 that will go out on Friday. So. Stay tuned. We sound so sure about sound, everything. Yeah. Like, I <laughs> think maybe potentially stay tuned. It's really okay. early in our defence. It is. It is very early. Thank you very much for watching this incredible Spanish GP podcast. Thank That's you to it. Tommy, Ali, Jess, and myself, of course. You, and we will you, see Matt. you next time Bye-bye. for the Monaco Grand Prix. Oh God! Yay. That's going to be Woo. a snooze fest. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. I can't wait for Jess's rant about Monaco. Oh, Monaco is so shit.